Hi, this is Yuka from the Java Bar. I'm going to do some Java tu tutorials today, starting off with the very basics of Java, getting Java installed on our system, and I'll be doing several tutorials teaching junior developers or new Java developers about Java. A little bit about myself, I'm uh, 30 years old, I'm living with a brain tumor. Um, I've been diagnosed recently with my third brain tumor in as, as many years, and I've had some brain surgeries and Due to this I suffer memory loss and I've struggled to find work in that. So to keep my Java knowledge up to date I've had to revisit my books and uh, uh, do some re, re go through my literature and I thought whilst doing so i would do some tutorials, help other developers and make the whole process a lot more productive for myself. Right, so obviously the first thing that we need with Java development is we need Java installed on our system and there are two versions or two different types of Java that we can have on our system. Basically the more common Java that you may or may not be familiar with is the Java runtime environment which allows users to run Java written applications on their system. And if you're familiar with banking applications or applications that require Java then typically you need a Java installed on your system but this is very different to the Java that we use to develop Java applications with. Basically let's explain to you a little bit about Java applications and how they work. Basically as a developer we write Java applications and we write handwritten code and we compile that code into bytecode which is understood by the Java virtual machine and basically the Java virtual machine uh, if you download the Java runtime environment you get a Java virtual machine to run applications on and you may have heard that Java is write once run anywhere. Now basically a Java virtual machine or the Java runtime environment is able to be installed on different systems, system A, B, C as an example Macintosh, Linux and Windows and given that when we code Java applications, we, co we compile that code and basically we translate the handwritten code into bytecode which is understood by the Java virtual machine and basically the Java virtual machine keeps your application abstract from the underlying system. Now the underlying operating system has its own bytecode, in other words Windows applications they have a different bytecode which makes them uh, allows them to be run on Windows which and uh, with the Java virtual machine as an example uh, it runs in bytecode which is understood by the underlying operating system and when we develop Java applications we write them um, we write the code for them and then we translate the code into bytecode which is understood by the Java virtual machine now uh, before we get started let's talk a little bit about what uh, a little bit more about Java and the type of applications that we can develop using Java. Java is quite versatile. We can develop web applications with Java. We can develop desktop applications. We can develop mobile applications. Uh, we can also develop enterprise or server based applications. And uh, these are just a few of the uses of Java and so forth. Right. So to do anything with Java in relation to development we need Java installed and to test whether Java is installed we can open a console. Now Java you can also write console based applications. Now if you're unfamiliar with what a console is a console is basically a mini application which is provided by your operating system and if you're familiar with the command prompt you can think of your command prompt as a console and basically this application allows us to interact with our operating system by executing commands and so forth in it. And if you're familiar with Linux and Macintosh you may be um, more familiar with a terminal or a shell and these are consoles for those based systems. Now for these tutorials just so that you're with me and I've tagged this video and I'll be tagging the other videos as Windows 7 and Windows 8. I'm using Windows 8 and if you're using Windows 7 I'll just show you the differences between um, Windows 7 and Windows 8. And this is the Windows 8 here and this is the main difference between the 
two systems is that this is the start menu which has replaced the legacy or the old start menu that you used to find by hovering here and so forth. So what I've done just to make these tutorials a little bit more easy to follow and to replicate Windows 7 start menu is I've pinned shortcuts here to my start menu and these come across as tiles in Windows 8 and I've pinned the most common uh, shortcuts that I'll be using for these tutorials. I've pinned my command prompt which you'll typically find very easily on Windows 7 and I've pinned my control panel and uh, so forth. Now we're going to open the command prompt to test whether Java is installed on our system. Alternatively you can also press the Windows key and the R key and you'll be able to run cmd.exe that's to open a command prompt. Otherwise if you wish to open the control panel you can hold in the Windows key and the uh, sorry, Windows key and the R to run you can just type in control to give you the control panel and so forth. Right, so we're going to test whether Java is installed on our system and that's very easy. We open a console or a command prompt and we type in the Java space version command and you'll see that Java isn't recognized by the system and so forth. And to remedy that we're going to download Java and install it. And we need to look for the Java JDK. JDK stands for uh, De Java Development Kit. And we can look for the Oracle link here which is Java Development Kit. Kit. We can choose that. And we get the downloads page here. And underneath the Java Software Development Kits or SDKs and tools you'll see there are multiple options to download. Now the Java Standard Edition, if you're new to Java and learning Java, then you're going to choose the Java SE, which stands for Standard Edition. And we also have, as discussed earlier, abilities to download the Enterprise Development Kits of Java, which is used for server applications and for enterprise computing. And with that, you get a complementary server to test your enterprise um, code. We also have the Java Micro Edition, which isn't really in use anymore, but in the late 90s, early 2000s, Java applications were very common across mobile phones, and this was the development kit aimed at those, and it hasn't been updated for some time. And Java-based applications have recently more moved towards Android. Android supports Java, and thus, if you're looking for mobile application development in Java, you can look at the Android software development kit and so forth. Now for this tutorial and for the future tutorials I'll be doing I'm going to download the Java Standard Edition and I'm going to choose the download link here and take note of the version number. We'll be interacting with that throughout this tutorial. So just click on the download version 7 update 15 and we need to accept the license agreement, obviously you should read it. And we have options for the various operating systems. And I'm using Windows, I have a 64-bit based system. But I can choose the 32-bit based and I'll do that for this tutorial because the location of where you'll find Java on your system varies according to whether or not you choose the correct version for your system. So for this tutorial I'm choosing the incorrect 32-bit or x86-bit version of Java and I'll be downloading that and saving it and I'll just pause for the download because it takes some time. Right, so Java is downloaded. If you're using Firefox you can just open the containing folder for the download and basically just go to your downloads directory if you're using another browser and you can double click the installer and you'll get a wizard and this wizard will guide you through the installation process but like any other application the defaults are pretty reasonable so you can just click through the installer although you can customize where you want the development kit installed and so forth and for the sake of saving time in this tutorial I'm just going to click through the defaults and before we configure Java in our system need to introduce you with the concept of an environment variable 
and a client and in programming we use the term terminology client to refer to um, an application that wishes to a interact with another running application or code in, and in other words we need to tell our command prompt which will be our client uh, for this example where to find Java and where to find the Java executables or code that it wishes to run and we do this through an environment variable now any number of applications can access the same environment variable and basically what the environment variable is it's a reference point that tells these applications where to find the directories or the applications that they need and so forth so as an example we try to run the Java command earlier and we got an error and when Java is installed here I'll show you what happens just so that you grasp the concept and just wait for it to finish and uh, just a sec sorry yeah so Java is installed and to locate Java we're gonna go to our C drive or the disk where our operating system is installed and because I chose the incorrect version of Java I'll find it in my x86 file directory under Java and had I chosen the correct version 64-bit for my 64-bit based system I'd find it under program files and likewise if I were running a 32-bit based system I'd find it under program files but chose the incorrect version so I'm going to go into x86 I'm going to go to my Java directory here and the version 7 update 15 directory now getting back to a environment variable an environment variable is basically a pointer to a client to tell the client where to locate the software that it's looking for or the applicate the executables and directories and so forth now if we go into the binary directory here or the bin directory of our Java installation we'll see that there are many executables here and applications and these applications when we provide access to them through the path environment variable we'll be able to run them in the console and basically the console it references the path environment variable and it looks for the commands that we run in the command prompt um, based on the entries in the environment variable so as an example when we compile Java code we want to run the Java C and we use that command to translate our handwritten code into the bytecode which is understood by the Java runtime environment or the virtual machine and these commands you'll find in this binary directory you'll see that I have the Java C command here which is an executable we have the Java command and so forth so essentially any of these entries here that are executables you'll be able to run from the command prompt once we've configured the location in our path environment variable so go to your address bar if you're in the binary directory control C what's it, whatever is in there to copy it and then you can press or hold the Windows R key and you can type in control hit enter or you can just open the control panel if you have a shortcut to it and to create a new environment variable type in env and hit enter and you get two options here and if you're the administrator of the system you can use the edit system environment variables and this option configures environment variables for the whole system and for all users of the system but it also requires a restart of your system to update your system with whatever you configure if you are a regular user you should have the edit environment variables for your account and this option makes your configurations available immediately so for this tutorial we'll use this option and this is where we create environment variables if you have an existing path environment variable you can add to that but we're going to create a new one for this tutorial 
and in general environment variables are always written in capital letters and this is very logical it provides a standard for creating environment variables and the console it looks for a path environment variable based on capital letters so we're going to create an environment variable with capital letters here the variable name is basically what the clients request when they ask for the location of uh, the commands that you try and execute they for example the console looks for a path environment variable in capital letters and then we provide the values for the console client to look and search for uh, based on the directories to find the executables and so forth etc so just paste control V what you copied and we can have multiple directory locations and so forth here should we wish to run commands from other applications or development kits or languages and so forth and we need to separate them if we wish to do so and we separate them with a semicolon so it's always a good idea to finish off with a semicolon so that you can simply append to this in future right so once we've added the value here we can select OK but just so that you understand the concept of environment variables a little bit more we're going to create additional environment variable here which is commonly used by various other applications that want to know where Java is installed on our system so if you can imagine that Java could in be installed on millions of systems in mi and millions of different locations um, basically any application that wishes to know about where Java is installed on a system A, B or C can do so by purely asking for the environment variable which will tell it where it is and this allows for abstraction of the application from the underlying system and basically as an example if you develop Java's web applications you can use Tomcat as a server to test and Tomcat will look for Java on my system and your system where it's installed and it will do so by looking for the Java underscore home environment variable which will tell Tomcat where Java is installed on my system, your system or anyone else's system and we're going to paste in what we copied earlier but it doesn't need to know where the bin directory is so you can just remove that and that should be sufficient that's just so that you understand concept of environment variables a little bit more right so now we're going to test whether Java is installed again Java space hyphen inch version and you'll see it's not recognized I need to close the command prompt that I had opened before I configured the environment variable and then I need to open a new one uh, you can just hold in the Windows key and the R key and type in cmd.exe and try again Java space hyphen inch version bingo we have Java runtime environment take note of the version that we downloaded it matches now because we compile Java code we need to make sure that the Java code that we compile if we're going to test it on the same system that the version for the compile command and the Java command which is used to run applications with are compliant and the same goes with when you write Java applications and you distribute them to users that they'll need to have a version of Java which is supportive of the application and typically those users they should have the latest Java installed on their system so we're just going to make sure that the Java C version matches the Java version and you'll see that it does so we have Java installed correctly on our system and this is my first tutorial in my next tutorial I'll do basic hello world console based application which basically well it's a very common across programming languages and it's a very simple application that just verifies that we have Java installed correctly on our system and gets you up and running with Java. Thank you for watching.